graffiti gets a bad rap. But in some areas, this negative perception is being turned on its head. Graffiti and street art is bringing communities back to life. It's turning dour and uninteresting streets into exciting, vibrant places to live and work. Graffiti is providing a creative outlet for young and old alike. It's opening eyes, creating new opportunities and making people happier. David Speed is a graffiti artist and the director of Graffiti Life, an organisation whose work shows that you don't have to sell a Banksy to have graffiti change your life. Graffiti Life is a collective of artists. We offer a range of services to our clients. So as well as having our little gallery here where we sell prints and original paintings, we also do team building, where we teach people how to paint. They can sort of learn how to do graffiti. We do murals. We've worked for some really big companies. We do advertising um, and we paint interiors, exteriors, murals all over the world, which is great. And um, we also do live art, so where we're sort of painting at an event and everyone can watch the artwork coming together. David is well aware of the negative attitudes towards some graffiti. The vandalism side of graffiti certainly does still exist and there are people that their sole aim is to become famous through, through their peers, really. It's not really on a wider scale, just, just within the graffiti community, they want to become well known. So they will then paint their name on as many surfaces as possible, that's kind of their goal. And that still very much exists. Um, it's, it's kind of funny how there's sort of two different worlds within it. There's, there's the people who are just, there's a lot of people who are strictly just painting legally. Um, there are people who are painting legally and illegally. And then there are the people who are strictly painting illegally. Um, and they, the, the two worlds both still exist. The reason that I'm allowed to, to, to work professionally as a graffiti artist nowadays um, comes down to the fact that there is an understanding from the general public of the artistic side of graffiti. Um, I think a lot of that can be attributed to Banksy and these really sort of clever messages that, that he was saying and quite ironic and satirical and things like that. And I think that was the catalyst for people to, to understand this art form a little bit more. And that was maybe the easy way in to, okay, well, I've seen this guy, Banksy, but let me see who else is out there. Um, and I don't think there would be a graffiti life if there hadn't been a Banksy beforehand because um, it sort of opened a lot of doors because people are now a lot more understanding of, of the artwork that we make. The Graffiti Life Gallery is in the heart of the East End an area that is now internationally famous for its street art. For me, I just love the fact that, I mean, I live in East London, so every day when I walk to work, I get to go to an art gallery completely for free. I'm walking past new pieces. It's forever changing. It's constantly updating itself. Every time I go past the wall, there's something new on it. And I, I love that kind of freshness. People come from across the world to come to East London just to see the street art. We run street art tours where we take people around this area and tell them bits about the artists that have, that have created this work. And on, on this, in the same way, artists, international artists, this would be their first stop, um, is, is to come to London to create artwork here just because this, this is the hub, this is the central place where this is where the, all the artwork happens, um, certainly within street art. So what is it about graffiti that David loves and wants to share with others? So for me, it's more about, I just enjoy seeing people expressing themselves. Like when we do workshops with people, you can see that when it kind of grabs them and people get to do this themselves and the pride that they have when they've created something amazing on this huge scale, much bigger than 
they've ever painted before because maybe the biggest they've ever painted before is sort of on a canvas or or just on a piece of A4 paper or something like that. And then all of a sudden you're painting a huge wall and you just have this this sense of achievement of, of what you've created. And I love that. I love I love the expression and the kind of the fact that there really are no rules. I mean you can you can paint whatever you like and, and that's there are so many people just painting what appeals to them and I think if you just paint what appeals to you then you will find a lot of people that it appeals to as well. A lot of times when we work with young people you find you get I mean in every group no matter what age they are you always get someone who says oh I can't even draw a stick man and they're the people that I really love kind of working with because I only need 90 minutes and with a person who says, I can't draw, I have no artistic talent, give me 90 minutes with that person. They'll be so proud of what they've created at the end of it. And I love that. Um, and we can really sort of turn that on its head. And a lot of young people that we work with, maybe they're not that confident. Um, we've worked with a lot of people who are kind of not in education or, or training. So they're, they're unemployed. Um, They've kind of maybe not been given a lot of opportunities or um, they've kind of been passed by by society or in school kind of they weren't really working well at academic subjects and that wasn't kind of what they were strongest at. And I often find with when I'm working with young people, I'll give them a compliment on what they're doing. And you'll go, oh, that's wicked what you've just done. That's really cool what you've just created. And they sort of look at you like, like, like they've never heard a compliment before. And I just think there's so many young people who are not being encouraged enough and, and maybe their schoolwork and stuff, they find it really hard or they find maths hard or something like that. But if you give them artistic, something artistic where it's kind of an open playing field, if I've got a group of young people who've never painted before, they're all at the set, roughly at the same skill level. And so they can produce something they can be really be proud of and you just see that kind of transformation in people. I think graffiti is a really powerful tool and I think it can bring communities together. I think that when community is involved in creating a piece of artwork, then they have ownership of that work and they become fiercely proud of it and protective of it. I mean, sometimes in the past, not so much over, over more recent years, but sometimes in the past we'd be, we'd be going up to a wall and we'd have our, get our spray cans out and lay them out on the floor just ready to paint. And you'd have people muttering under their breath something about graffiti or messy or you're about to ruin this wall or whatnot. But then as soon as you've started painting, those same people are walking by and I mean, the amount of, of sort of older people, the older generation who maybe you would expect to not be interested in what we're doing or, or particularly inspired by what we're doing. I was amazed initially for how many of those people were coming over and going, what you are doing is fantastic and we love it. And that's, I mean, that's happened so many times. Um, and I think that's, that's just so amazing that people are, are sort of walking by and they're, and they're getting involved and they're saying, no, we, we really approve of what you're doing. For me, I want to, like my goal and Graffiti Life's goal on, on the whole is, is to create artwork everywhere. So we're happiest when we can walk down the street and we can see amazing artwork everywhere. And I think that like as I'm traveling, I would much rather see creative stuff on the walls wherever I go rather than just kind of plain blank painted by the council grey walls. Um, I, th I think that's kind of stifling and, and I think people should be encouraged to be, be creative.